Welcome. Today, we're stepping into a very special place, a legendary medical event here in Egypt, the grand rounds of Professor Muhammad al alfi at El Azhar University. This is the room where the country's most perplexing cases often land and where brilliant minds find a path forward when everyone else has hit a wall. Let's dive right in. So every great medical story starts with a patient. And ours begins with a 38-year-old man who, until very recently, was described as being quite well. And I want you to hold on to that phrase, because this isn't some slow, chronic decline. This is a story about a sudden, terrifying drop off of a cliff. All right, let's build a quick picture of him. He's a driver, he's a heavy smoker, and he's a cannabis user. Let's just put a pin in that one for later. But what's really important here is what's not on his chart. No diabetes, no hypertension. For all intents and purposes, this guy was healthy just a couple of months ago. Now, the very first piece of the puzzle, the clue that kicked this whole thing off, seemed almost trivial. It started with his kidneys, presenting as, well, vague urinary symptoms, something you or I might see any day in the clinic, and something that could easily be misjudged. It was the first whisper of the storm to come. But his condition didn't just get worse. It completely fell apart. I mean, look at this timeline. It shows a frighteningly rapid collapse. See that pivot? What started in his urinary tract has now launched a full-scale assault on his respiratory system. First, shortness of breath, then he can't breathe lying down, and then, the crisis point. He starts coughing up blood. The fire is spreading, and it is spreading fast. The lab work tells a story of absolute catastrophe. His hemoglobin is down to eight. I mean, he is bleeding somewhere, and it's significant. A white blood cell count of 22,000 is just screaming systemic inflammation. And a creatinine of 6.5? His kidneys are in severe, acute failure. They've essentially just quit. This is a body at war with itself. And then we get the chest CT, and wow, it's stunning. We're seeing diffuse bilateral ground glass opacities, a radiological whiteout. Now, this isn't your garden variety pneumonia. This is the classic textbook signature of diffuse alveolar hemorrhage, or DAH. His lungs are literally filling with blood. And this right here perfectly illustrates a critical clinical parole from Professor Al Alfi. He insists you cannot wait for hemoptysis. You just can't. In any patient presenting with acute shortness of breath and a dropping hemoglobin, your suspicion for DAH has to be sky high. That falling hemoglobin, that is your signal. That's your call to action. So here's the challenge for any clinician standing at the bedside. You've got two systems in catastrophic failure a pulmonary crisis over here, and a renal crisis over there. So what do you do? Are these two separate, unlucky problems? Or is there a single, devastating process that connects everything? With all the evidence laid out, Professor al alfi provides the unifying diagnosis, pulmonary renal syndrome. And calling it a syndrome is absolutely crucial. See, it's not one single disease, it's a pattern. It's a massive red flag that should immediately trigger a very specific and very urgent protocol. Now, pulmonary renal syndrome is an umbrella term. The underlying cause could be any number of things, from ANCA-associated vasculitis to anti-GBM disease, what we used to just call good pastures. But here's the beautiful part of this approach. In this moment of crisis, the exact cause doesn't matter nearly as much as the immediate response. The initial management is the same. Act fast and shut down the immune system. And this brings us to the core philosophy of this whole case from Professor Al Alfi himself. He says, this needs to be tackled from the end. So what on earth does that mean? It means you don't climb the ladder of interventions one by one. You don't start small, you start at the top. You treat for the absolute worst case scenario from the very first moment. So, the plan of attack was this three-pronged counteroffensive. First, aggressive supportive care to stabilize him. CPAP, fluids, the works. Second, and this is key, urgent plasmapheresis to literally wash his blood of whatever destructive antibodies or toxins are causing this. And third, hydrosteroids to slam the brakes on that runaway inflammation. And let me tell you, the threat was so severe that the potential for needing dialysis was extremely high. But, and this is a testament to the strategy, because they moved so fast and so aggressively, this patient's renal function remarkably recovered. He was spared that step. 
And just to hammer home how unbelievably urgent this is, listen to what Professor Al Alfi said about getting plasmapheresis started. He said, if I had the machine, I would do it today, not tomorrow, today. That one sentence just perfectly captures the race against time that defines the management of this syndrome. So the crucial point here is this complete paradigm shift in thinking. The standard protocol is slow, right? You do a workup, you get a biopsy, you wait for the result, then you treat. Professor Al Afi's crisis protocol flips this completely on its head. You treat aggressively now, you stabilize the patient, and you worry about the biopsy later. Time is life, and time is organ function. So the patient who was on the brink stabilized and improved. It's a fantastic outcome. So what are the crucial, life-saving, clinical pearls we can take away from this masterclass? Okay, first and foremost, you have to redefine your clinical suspicion. Do not anchor your diagnosis on the patient coughing up blood. That's a late sign. And don't wait for obvious blood in the urine. It can be microscopic. The second you see acute dyspnea plus a falling hemoglobin, especially with that characteristic CT, alarm bells for DAH should be going off in your head. The second huge lesson is about reversing that diagnostic sequence. In an unstable patient like this, treatment becomes the priority, full stop. That biopsy result, that's for refining long-term therapy, not for deciding whether to start life-saving measures right now. The patient simply cannot wait. Now, this wasn't an isolated once-in-a-lifetime event. The presenting physician, Dr. Mahmoud Wafa, noted he's actually seen a small handful of these cases before, five to be exact. And here's the final fascinating pearl that brings our patient's history right back into focus. Of the five cases of pulmonary renal syndrome that he's seen, two of them were triggered by cannabis use. Remember that little pin we put in his social history? This is a critical reminder to always consider toxic exposures as a potential trigger for these massive immunological crises. So we'll end with the question this entire case forces us to ask ourselves. When a patient is crashing in front of you with this constellation of confusing clues, What's more important, the precision of a perfect biopsy-proven diagnosis or the speed of decisive action based on a strong clinical suspicion? As this case shows, sometimes you have to be aggressive, you have to be decisive, and you have to tackle the problem from the end.